Hello everybody and welcome to this video in which I'm showing you how to build a field charger for your booster drive scooter. The project is intended to allow you to charge the scooter in places where you don't have access to an IC power outlet. However, you cannot charge the scooter while riding it because as soon as you apply external voltage to the charging port, uh, the scooter turns off and goes into charging mode. This solution works with pretty much any batteries you want, provided that they have sufficient output power, roughly at least 100, 120 watts, and really any voltage, as long as it's below the nominal charging voltage, which is 54.4. Uh, most, most vehicle batteries will work, uh, motorbike batteries will work, golf cart batteries will work. You could even connect it to your uh, car battery or your RV battery. The project is safe because it doesn't use high voltage anywhere. It is gentle on the, on the REV's internal batteries and it will not shorten their life because we're using a regulated source that is limited both in voltage and in current and because we're programming it to the very same values that I measured from the original boosted charger. It is more efficient than using an inverter because there's no double conversion. You don't go from DC to AC and then DC again. And it even works with uh, power adapters that you might have lying around, uh, as long as they have at least 120 watts of power. And that might be cheaper than buying another original boosted adapter. In addition to that, it doesn't void the warranty. It doesn't require you to open up the scooter and touch anything inside. Your scooter remains immaculate and original. And it's very inexpensive because you can uh, build the project with off-the-shelf parts that you can buy from either Amazon or eBay for, for very little money. Okay, now before we get to the point, I need to remind you that even if all the information that I'm giving you is correct to the best of my knowledge, whatever you do with it is your responsibility. You assume all responsibility for what you do after seeing this video. If you damage your scooter or you hurt yourself, you are on your own and if you're uh, only thinking about suing me stop this video read the legalese here and then don't sue me okay let's see the system in action i'm going to be using a 12 volt 20 ampere hour battery it's a cheap sealed lead acid battery that i got from amazon you can choose a different one in general try and buy the largest battery that you're comfortable carrying around and you also need to buy the appropriate charger for that technology or battery that you're going to buy. Uh, you can choose a different voltage, you can choose a different capacity, you can choose a different technology. For more guidance, wait till the end of the video. Next, you're going to get this Jock DC to DC boost converter. This is truly where the magic happens. You're going to use this board to raise your battery voltage to the 54.4 volt level that is necessary to feed the scooter's internal charger circuitry. Uh, this board goes for $29.85 on Amazon. Next, I'm going to be connecting a voltage current power energy meter. This is optional. You don't need it. I bought it because I wanted to measure what's going on. And I also used it to reverse engineering what the scooter's original power supply unit does, which is all documented at the end of this video. Now I'm showing for a second the original brick which came with the scooter. We're not using it now except for its plug. I cut the cable and I inserted an Anderson power pole connector so that I could insert the energy meter in between and that's what I used at the end of these, this video. Uh, right now we're just taking the plug that feeds into the scooter because it's all already soldered with the Anderson connectors. You don't need to do the same. In fact, you shouldn't cut your original cable. Buy instead a 2.5 by 5.5 by 9.5 millimeter DC plug instead. Now I'm connecting my 12 volt battery to the drock uh, unit inputs. Uh, you'll notice that I wired up both the battery clamps and the drock unit terminals with uh, Anderson power pole connectors to make everything easy. You'll see that as soon as the draw unit is connected to power, it's going to display the input voltage, which is in this case 14.05 volts. And uh, then I'm going to connect my power meter to the output of the draw unit. And finally, I'm going to connect the plug to the output 
of the power meter. Then I'm programming 2.1 amperes as the current limit on the drug unit. You can use 2.2, but I want it to be on the safe side. And now we're truly ready for showtime. All you need to do is to set your output DC voltage of the drug unit to 54.4, which is the nominal open circuit output voltage of the original brick, at least according to its label. Uh, I measured an actual output voltage of uh, 54.7, but we're going to stay on the safe side and input 54.4. When you're all set, you press OK on the drug unit to enact the settings, and boom, the charge display on the scooter goes live, the charge process starts, and the scooter's internal charge and circuitry starts absorbing 2.1 amperes, which is our current limit. And we're done. This is truly all there is to it. This is basically what you would do in the field when you are at destination, and you can leave the scooter uh, under charge for a little while so that you can come back and find it uh, charged uh, for your uh, return trip back home or for the next leg. Of course, in the field, you'll want to make sure that your 12 volt battery, your cables, and the drug unit are protected from the elements and from water. Uh, you can even buy an enclosure which to mount the drug unit. If you do, make sure that you allow appropriate uh, airflow. And that's it. I am not showing you any further the, the charge process because I made it into a time lapse that you have already seen at the beginning of this video. Rather, uh, we're going to move on to uh, the last part of the video in which I discuss the details of the charge parameters and uh, I show you how I measured them from the charging of the scooter with its original power brick. So if you made it uh, till now, you're probably curious about the technical details. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I instrumented the reference charge process uh, using the original power brick that came with the scooter in order to discover the charge parameters. So I discharged the scooter completely. I connected it to the original power brick uh, using the energy meter that I showed you earlier and I locked the scooter's internal battery voltage and the charge current over time till it's charged completely. The time lapse here is accelerated approximately 50 times, but it should be easy for you to see uh, how far we are into the process because I'm also filming a, uh, an alarm clock that is uh, set uh, to start at noon at the start of the charging process. Okay, let's now talk about what we discover about the charging process so that we can replicate safely and, and how we discovered it. So the rev internal battery voltage goes from 35.97 volts when it's fully discharged to 48.79 volts when it's fully charged and the internal charger disconnects. The voltage that you see at any point in time is useful to estimate what the charge level is. All you have to do is to look up that voltage in the curve. Charging time was 192 minutes, so that's roughly three hours and a quarter, and the total amount of input energy that we provided to the scooter's uh, internal charging circuit was 307 watt hours. Uh, and this is a little disappointing because the nominal battery energy capacity is 340 watt hour so this value is roughly 10 percent below nominal it's interesting to notice that the charging circuitry uh, intended as the, the the circuitry that decides how much power to send to the internal battery or not is is entirely inside the scooter uh, the brick that you would normally call the, the charger, is just a, uh, in quotes, stupid uh, regulated DC supply and uh, nothing else. During the charge, we see a current going into the uh, scooter of exactly 2.2 amperes or nothing. It's an all or nothing process. 
And interestingly enough, uh, the, the charging process is a single stage. Somewhat surprising because most uh, chargers and uh, lithium ion charger uh, circuits implement a two stage uh, process in which the first stage is constant current and it's followed by a constant voltage stage. But no, uh, the, the scooter's internal charger either absorbs 2.2 amperes or it does nothing. Incidentally, 2.2 amperes is also a useful value uh, to set uh, the, the drock uh, unit uh, as a current limit to the open circuit uh, DC voltage that you get out of the um, power supply unit, out of the original uh, brick, is uh, 54.74 volts, which is a little higher than the nominal 54.4 that is written on the label on the power supply unit. So you can use this or the nominal value as a um, target voltage for the drug unit. I prefer to use nominal just out of safety, so I'm going to set it to 54.4. The power that the scooter's internal charging circuit wants uh, varies between 77.7 uh, watts to 107.7 watts. And uh, of course it increases because it's uh, supplying basically constant current at an increasing uh, voltage as the uh, scooter's battery is more and more charged. Why is this file important? Because your battery, your 12 volt battery, needs to be powerful enough so that this much power comes out of the drock unit. So how much power do you need to put into the drug unit? Well, uh, the drug unit is um, nominally 85% uh, efficient. So the sustained power that your battery or your salvaged uh, DC supply uh, should be able to provide uh, sustained is 127.7 watts. Now, what's the capacity that your battery should offer? How large of a battery should you buy? Well, uh, it should deliver roughly 360 watt hour of energy, which at 12 volts corresponds to uh, 30 ampere hour capacity. However, 12 volt batteries don't quite always perform as advertised. Specifically, the one I bought has a 20 ampere hour nominal capacity, and therefore it should deliver 240 watt hour of energy. But if you uh, check back uh, the time lapse at the beginning of this video, you will see that I actually measured it to deliver 118 watt hour, which is roughly uh, half of the nominal uh, energy capacity. So what 12 volt battery would you want to buy if you want to be able to give it a full charge, including this uh, 2x fudge factor? Well, you should buy a 60 ampere hour. So I'll keep it short, Skarpatsa. What what does all this boil down to? Um, in short, I have three recommendations. Uh, get the drug unit, set its target voltage to 54.4 volt, which is the nominal uh, voltage that the original boosted uh, power supply unit provides set it, its uh, current limit to 2.2 ampere, buy a 12 volt battery of tolerable weight, buy a battery that is not too big or too heavy for you to carry around, and that is able to give you enough of a charge uh, to complete your trip or to come back home. If you really want to be able to get one full charge, on your scooter from, from a battery, uh, including the fudge factor, you might have to buy a 60 ampere hour nominal, which is a battery capacity size that is totally available and uh, easy to find on, on the internet, on eBay, on Amazon. Uh, and if you're using a salvaged uh, PSU from, from anything like an old laptop, uh, please ensure that it delivers at least uh, 128 watts. That's all.